everyone, Sandy here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm sharing a bee house folio that I designed for Country Craft Creations using their exclusive bee house paper collection that's available online in their store at countrycraftcreations.com. So this measures about five and a half by almost seven and a half and it is a waterfall folio so here on the front i use tie closure using seam binding ribbon in the black and the gold colored yellow i added a metal b i believe i got this from um, butterbee scraps i had to think there for a minute these are some sunflowers i had in my stash and uh, leaves and i just glued that on the front so on the back i have this real pretty piece added on that uh, holds the ribbons down so you just untie it it's it has no magnets in it it's just held uh, closed with the ribbon so this opens up so I left this with the pretty papers and this with the pretty papers here there's some gorgeous designs in this paper collection and I didn't want to cover anything up besides you can put a photo here if you wanted to and then this flips back like this let's make sure that we're in frame here and double checking my autofocus it should not be focusing, but sometimes it still goes ahead and goes in and out. So here on the right, we have a, a real flat, little flap that is held shut by a string closure. And in it, we have two photo mats and, of course, the beautiful paper here. You could put a photo, but this is just gorgeous, this bee house here. So that is kept closed with just a string wrap closure. Like that. And there in the center, we have a pocket, and inside the pocket, I put this booklet. I have a bee charm, some of the jute string, and this opens up, and we have two photo mats in here. And then we have a large tag, wide, it's short, but wide, and you could put a photo back there if you wanted to. And then this flip lifts up, so we have photo mat area up here. And this comes down and we have another photo mat area here at the bottom sliding around and then we have the waterfall which has the continuous image and i did some fussy cutting and add these flowers and the bee that i thought was really pretty but this is a gorgeous collection so it looks really pretty when it's cut like this and i show you how i did it in my tutorial video which is also included in this video uh, if you stay tuned you'll see the tutorial so I left, on the inside of the waterfalls, I left everything black for photos. I just have the trim on the bottom, but on the inside, everything is the black cardstock. So it's good for photos. And then underneath this waterfall, which is a belly band, we have two large mats with the beautiful papers. And they're blank on the back where you could add photos. So let me show you those like that. So that goes all back together bottom flap comes up has the pocket where you can hold it closed there's no magnet so just these elements keep this closed uh, it has a good thickness here three quarter inch for your expansion of your photos in there and then of course the one inch sides here so this is my bee house folio for country craft creations make sure you check out their online store at countrycraftcreations.com for this exclusive paper collection called bee house and stay tuned for my tutorial, which we will be starting soon. Thanks. For this folio, I'm excited to be using the new and exclusive paper collection by Country Craft Creation called Bee House. It is a gorgeous um, paper line that has lots of beautiful bee images. Uh, it is currently available online at countrycraftcreations.com so this is what i'm going to be working with on this folio and these papers are eight and a half by 11. so that's going to work great for this folio i'm also going to be using the black artisan cardstock so i have a pack of that in the cutting list supply list i will give the exact amount of paper that i use so you can just check on that and follow along here on the video. So I'll also be using as my adhesive the art glitter glue, which you can also pick up at countrycraftcreations.com. 
And like I said, any other supplies that I end up using will be listed in the supply list. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. So I've cut out my cardstock. I ended up using five sheets of the 12 by 12 Black Artisan uh, to create this cardstock folio. And uh, you need one piece for your main back base. So this is your back base piece. You need to cut one that's seven and a half by seven and a half. And then for our front closure pieces, we need two that are six and a half wide by seven and a half tall. We need um, for our center section a top flap that is five and a quarter wide by six tall. And then we need a bottom flap that is five and a quarter wide by five tall. And we're going to have a waterfall. So we have a waterfall belly band piece that is four and a half wide by eight and a quarter tall. Six pieces for the waterfall flaps that are four and a half wide by five inches tall and then two inserts that go under the belly band of the waterfall that are five and a quarter wide by seven. So we're going to be scoring the ones that need scored. And these measurements will be in a cutting list in the description of this video. Uh, there'll be a link to a Google Doc that you can click on and then you can print it. So there will be a cutting guide along with the supply list. Um, and a link will be provided for you in the description of this video. So I'm not going to go over these measurements again because you can print that up and follow along. So let's get ready to score these. So I grab my scoreboard and my scoring tool. So the first one is for our back base. We cut this seven and a half by seven and a half on one seven and a half inch side. We're going to score at one inch and six and a half. So that's going to give us a one inch space on each side. Then for the front closure flaps, we have two of these that are six and a half by seven and a half. So put your six and a half inch side in at the top. And we're going to score at one inch. So do both of those exactly the same. Score at one inch. Then for our top flap that goes in the center section, we have a piece that we cut five and a quarter wide by six tall. We're going to turn it and score the six inch side at three quarters of an inch. Just double checking my notes here. Three quarters of an inch on this one. Then we have the bottom flap that is five and a quarter wide by five, five and a quarter by five. So we put the five inch at the top and we're going to score it at three quarters also. Okay. The waterfall belly band piece that we're going to assemble our waterfall flaps on is a four and a half by eight and a quarter. We're going to score the eight and a quarter side at a half inch and seven and three quarters. So that gives us a half inch hinge on each end. Then for our waterfall flaps, we have six of these that are four and a half wide by five. And we're going to score the five inch side on all six of these. Five inch side at the top, score all six and a half inch. The last two cardstock pieces are um, inserts, and these are two at five and a quarter wide by seven tall. And the only thing we're going to do to those is I'm going to corner round the corners. So I'm going to do both of them at the same time with this half inch chomper. So I'm going to give them a half inch corner rounding on all four corners. There is no scoring on these. You can make more of these if you want. I am just doing two for now. Okay, so that's our scoring. So let's move the scoreboard out of the way.
So to set these two aside, over here on the right, to my left. So I'm going to turn these back over and get to this here at the front. So this is the back section of our folio. So I want to score these one inch spaces on the score line on both sides. Just like that. So we're going to do this scoring, folding, and scoring on all of our pieces. So this is the front flaps. So they have one inch spaces as well. These are the flaps on the inside. This is the top one. So these have three quarter inch spaces for the hinges. Both of these have three quarters. One's shorter than the other. They're offset when we put them in. The uh, waterfall belly band base has a half inch score line. So we fold both of those under. And then all our waterfall flaps have a half inch. So we just score, uh, fold and burnish all of those. So burnish them really well so that they lay down nice and flat. Real quick, I did forget one piece of cardstock. This is cut, if you want to do this, this is an optional flap that I think I'm going to be adding to probably the front flap of the book on the inside, front or inside, or right one or left, I haven't decided yet. But this, this is an extra flap. This is cut from a piece of the scrap of paper, so you don't need to cut up a new um, sheet of 12 by 12. So you're going to cut one for this flap. I had it in my notes and it was on the back side, so I didn't see it when I was doing my cutting. So this is a flap and it's cut out of cardstock. So you want one that is five inches wide by seven and a half tall. And then I scored the five inch side at a half inch. So that, let's go ahead and fold that up and burnish that and set that aside. So this is for an extra flap inside of the folio. I have gone through the pattern papers and I have cut the different uh, pieces that I need for different sections of the album. Uh, these measurements will be in the cutting guide, but um, will not. I will not say which papers I use because that's a personal choice. I mean, uh, or which pattern I used on what. You can look at mine when it's finished and see if you like what I used. But I'm just in the guides, we'll say pattern paper and the dimensions, the width and the height. And I give the width so that you know that you need to do the direction, especially on these pattern papers that have an image. So you don't want anything sideways or upside down or what have you. So we're going to start assembling, adding pattern papers as we assemble. So I will give those. I did make myself a few notes where I need to add what I want to make as an, uh, string closures before putting down my paper. Uh, I am not going to use magnets in this. The actual folio will be closed with, I think I'll use ribbons that wrap around uh, the whole book. So I'm not going to add anything like that. No magnets in this one. We're ready to uh, get started. Um, I think the first thing we will do is work on the center section. So this is the piece of cardstock that has the two one inch wings on each side. Let me slide some room up here. I've clipped everything together, so I have cut my pattern paper. So for this, for the outside back, and for the inside, we will go ahead and put these down. So these are, you want two, select two for the center, uh, for the back, I call it back base. You want two that are five and three eighths wide by seven and three eighths tall. And if you're going to ink that, you would go ahead and do that now. I am not, so I'm just gonna get my glue. I'm using the art glitter glue and I'm just gonna start attaching these down. Now on this center in here is where we will have our waterfall. We'll add that on after we assemble it. So for right now, I'm just going to line this up in here. And I'm using the B side or the back side of a pattern paper from this B House collection. 
because you will not see hardly any of this. You will see um, just the edges after the waterfall goes in. So for now, we don't put anything here. We're going to turn this over, and I want this piece here on the back. I'm going to fold my wings down so that I can actually see the whole section that I'm going to put my pattern paper on. So I'm going to see if I can make it lay down to make it a little bit easier. So we put the glue on the back. I have just recently started adding, doing the pattern paper as I assemble projects, and I find that I really like that. Uh, it does take some pre-planning and thinking, but in the end, I really like that everything goes together pretty quickly, it seems. So, there's that. Just burnish that down. That's the back side. I kind of got that off just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Wait a second. Maybe I can reposition it real quick. That's the thing about uh, glue. You can, you have just a few minutes. You can actually reposition something. There we go. It's a little bit better. Still tacky. And then I burnish it really good. Make sure that everything is sticking down. So that's the outside back side of your folio. Uh, this left uh, outer flap. This is the one with the one inch hinge here. Uh, this way the left side of our book. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put those down. So you need two of these for your front closure flap. Or you're actually going to use four because we have the other piece. So you cut four that are five and three eighths wide by seven and three eighths tall. But you're going to use two on this one and two on the right one. So I'm doing this one first. I love the honey jar with these bees. So I'm going to check out that I got it cut right. I'm going to put the glue on the back. So if you haven't checked out this uh, paper collection on Country Craft Creations, um, it is on their online store. It is her, uh, Tamara's exclusive paper collection, only sold for now at her store, designed by Tamara. And it is just beautiful. It only this one only comes in the eight and a half by eleven, though. It was designed specifically for one of her projects for one of her retreats. So, and that pretty. Now, this is not going to have anything on the back side, inside. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this one down here. And I'm not using any magnets, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm still in frame here, where you can see on the camera. And we burnish that down. Such pretty images with the flowers and the bees. Okay, so that is this piece here. And I'm ready probably to go ahead and put that on. Let me look at my other... So this one here, the one on the right, I have my note to add a string closure. So I'm going to set this paper aside. We cannot put that one on until I do a string closure. Um, so the string closure is going to go through that and then we'll glue down onto that. So we can do the back side. So we have our hinge will be here on the right. This is our back side, which will end up being here when it's folded up. So I'm going to use the keyhole. I think that's just so pretty with the B on there. So put my glue on there. And line this up. This is one of those pieces that I gave earlier for your front flaps, which is five and three eighths wide by seven and three eighths tall. 
So there's that one. Now this is where the extra flap's going to go and our um, string closure. So we're not putting that on yet. Uh, let's set this aside. This is the piece that we're going to focus on next. But let's go ahead and put these pieces together. So I wanted the extra strength on the side. So this is why we're going to double this up right here on the side. This is how we're going to assemble it. So I'm going to put glue, fold this down. I'm going to put glue here on this one inch piece. Oops, I'll get it on my paper. Okay, take the right hand flap and we're going to line this up. This one's going to go right on it, same on each end and right into the fold of your flap. And I'm going to flatten it down so that I can burnish it and make sure everything's going in right. So there's that side there. So when this comes up, this will be positioned like that. And we're going to take the other side and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the glue on this left one here. We're going to take this one and fold this one down so I can see better. And we're going to fit this one right into it, right up into the fold. Make sure my top and my bottom ends are even. Turn it over, flatten it out so we can burnish. So that double thickness there with this artisan cardstock really adds to the strength of it. And then we will, of course, have things inside but also we're going to add pattern paper to these. So make sure that's burnished really good. So let me grab those pieces. So after I had cut everything out, then I cut the strips that are going to go here. So I just want to look at them. Okay, if you see a direction, then you need to um, put that on. There is no right or wrong way. You can use your B side or your A side whichever you want. They don't actually go with these papers and that's fine. So I'm going to put glue. Now these strips you have four that are cut at seven eighths of an inch wide by seven and three eighths tall. And that's going to go between the fold lines of this one inch space here. Front on the outside and on the inside. So again, you cut four that are seven eighths of an inch wide by seven and three eighths tall. Let me see how they fit right in there. Keep them off that fold line. Double check that and burnish That's the outside. So let's turn it over. We're going to go ahead and put the pieces on the inside. These, of course, the same size. So that one's going to go there. I like the B side of the paper too, but I just can't help myself. The vibrant colors of the A side with the main patterns. The brightness of it I just I love that so these are going to fit right in here okay. and this is going to make this really strong for a folio and then the last one it's going to go right there okay then we're going to work I think on our string closures so we can get this added add-on flap which I did say was optional and of course you know you don't have to put it in if you don't want to but 
think it's going to work great for this folio. It gives you an extra place for some photos. So this is where this paper is going to go. So we can go ahead and put these photo mats on the inside of this add-on mat. And these are, I've glued down this one. I'm going to put the second one on. These mats are out of the white cardstock. You have four and three eighths wide by three and a half tall. So the second one's going to go right down here. So I'm just going to add the glue. So it doesn't matter. You can pattern your inside of your flap before we add the button string. I'm just trying to make these about the same distance in the top and bottom from each other. You move it over just, just a tiny bit. Okay, there we go. Now we burnish that down. So we have two photo mats here on this inside like that. So this is the front. We've got the hinge folded back. And this piece will go here. And we're going to put our button strings on the pattern paper before we glue them down. So our string, not but our button string with our closures. So I have used a three quarter inch circle punch. And I punched two out of the black cardstock and two out of some of the scraps, little scraps of paper. And I have two white um, eyelets here. And then I need my crocodile tool. Let me grab that. So here is the um, tool that I use. It's by Memory, We Are Memory Keepers. So we have the hole punch. We have the small and the big, so I'm going to use the bigger one. And first, I'm going to glue these two together. I'm going to glue a patterned one to a cardstock one. This just helps to give it some strength. So I'm going to glue these together and let them dry. Just glue the two circles together like that. And then I have to decide exactly where I want these attached. So let me move this out of the way. So we're going to have this coming over this. So the pattern paper is going to be about right there. And then this is going to be attached here. Just lining it up without attaching anything actually down so I can see and put a dot on these pattern papers. So we've got this lined up. This one here looks like I might need to trim it down. So you'll have to decide that I'm going to trim it down just, just the teeniest bit. Okay, because I've Looked like it was going to stick over some there. That's that's better. Okay, grab me a sharpie. Okay, make sure my pattern paper is here, right? This one is correct here. Pattern paper. So. I'm going to put it right about here. And then this one about right there. That should work. Okay, now I'm going to take the pattern paper and I'm going to lay the circle over it where I think it should go. I'm going to have to scoot it over a little bit. There we go. So my hole punch will reach. It won't reach all that way if I don't. There we go. So I'm going to line it up in the center the best I can. And punch that hole. Okay, so there's that one. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. 
right here. Drop the eyelet in. Okay, and then I'm going to take my setting tool, which is on the end, and put it into the finished side here. Line them up, keep it straight, and squeeze. And what that does is it crimps that on the back. Hope I'm still on the camera. So that one's going to go right there. Okay. Now this next one, we're going to punch the hole. And we'll also need to add our string. So got that one about right there. I'm going to hold it with my hand. And make sure I've got the large hole. So I'll punch it in the center. I'm going to line it up the best I can. Okay, now then let's grab some string. I need to decide. I have this, um, I guess it's like an avocado green. I like that. And then I had the yellow. I think I'm going to go with the green for this. So I'm going to cut me off a length of string. That's probably going to be more than I need, but I like to have extra. So, the scissors. So I cut off about 1224. About 34 inches. A yard. A yard would work, but I don't I know I'm not gonna need that much. So I'm going to take my string and I've wrapped it around this eyelet. And I'm going to stick it in. Let's see here. I want to put the eyelet first through my circle. Then the string. Like the loop of the string. I'm going to put that right there. And I think I'm going to maybe go ahead and tie it into a little loop. Oops, dropped it. Come back. Just want to make sure the string stays on when I crimp it. Now then, drop it into the pattern paper, like that, and then we're going to crimp this down. So the pokey prong of the tool goes into the eyelet, and we squeeze, and it locks it in place, okay? So it's really not that hard if you've never used a setting tool like that, give it a try. And then I like this double here. And I am going to tie this again. Just right in here. Kind of tie it in a knot. There we go. So we have that. And I'm going to leave it long until I've glued everything down. And then I can figure out how where to cut it. So let's go ahead and match this piece to the inside of the back flap. So we take our glue. That I keep wiping cat hair. My cat got up here on the table one. I don't like that when they do that. They did that while I wasn't here. Okay, so we've got it on and burnish. Especially right around here. I'm going to make sure we get that all nice and burnished. Isn't that beautiful? This bee house and the roses. I just love the color and the bees on this. So I got that burnished really good. Oh, I forgot to put the... Let me lift this up really quick. In my eagerness to get it down, I forgot to put the flap on. Okay, lift that up real quick. 
grab your flap and we want to put glue on the folded down side of this hinge attachment hinge and we're going to slip that under there so I do apologize about that let's um it's a little more difficult to line it up but I think I think we're going to be okay we just need to get it under that pattern paper and make sure it is all lined up so please put yours on let's stick it in a little more put yours on before <laughs> attaching your pattern paper down Go. Let's burnish that. Here I had my notes and everything, but didn't didn't take care of that. So now I can put the paper down. So that's why I do like to use glue sometimes. If you notice your mistake fast enough, you can get it where you can correct something. So there we go. We burnish that side now. So we do have our flap on now. There we go. And we're ready for this piece of pattern paper. Except this one's a little crooked right here. Let me see if I can straighten it some. Don't like it crooked on the bottom, so I don't know if I had it cut crooked. Or I just need to burnish it better in the fold. Okay. So now this is going to go on. And here, see if I need to trim any more off of it. Just still another little bit on the right side. Okay, now there we go. So let's put this down. We don't need that sticky note anymore. I think I used the wrong side of the pattern paper, but that's okay. I was going to use this side B, but I like this one too and it kind of offsets the other side there so it's going to work just fine and we line that up and we burnish it down and again where it's a little off right there i'm going to move it okay here we go burnish burnish now we have our string closure and we're just going to wrap it around Couple of times if you have to lift it a little bit. Oops. And then I'm going to tie it into a knot. And let it hang down just a little bit. So it was plenty long enough. I only had about six inches or so that I didn't need, but so about 30 inches would work, but just to be on the safe side. I'm glad that worked like that. So there is that. So that part. So that's going to go like that. Now it's floppy right now because we need to put our waterfall in. So let's set this aside and go ahead and start working on the waterfall. So these are the two um, inserts. I'm going to set those aside. So I'll grab my waterfall pieces okay so first of all i'm just batting a hundred i forgot to put my flaps on first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them on and then i'm going to use something to cover this up because uh, I've already put my papers down. This is one of the hazards of uh, patterning everything before everything's put together. But I'm going to make it work. So these two I have cut to seam them together. So this is our top flap. It goes in the center. And center top flap, I have a five and one eighth wide by three and five eighths tall. 
five and one eighths wide by one and three eighths tall. So these are going to be pieced together there. And I do apologize for not having you put your flaps on before adding that patterned paper on the center. I will make a note when I edit the video to tell you when you should put it on so that you don't have to fix it like I'm going to. But if I didn't tell you, you might have thought that that was the way I was going to do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. There are no mistakes in paper crafting. There's just creative opportunities. So we're going to put this right here on this and burnish that. So that's the front of the flap. And on the inside of the flap, I'm going to put a white cardstock mat. And I cut this to center top flap, five and one eighths by five and one eighths. So I'm going to put that in there, right there. Five and one eighth by five and one eight mat. So that's the top flap. So for the center bottom flap, make sure your hinge is towards the bottom here. So you get your right direction. And I forgot that when you put this one together, your hinge needs to be at the top. So we have that correct. So here on the front, I have a piece that I cut out of patterned paper that is five and one eighth wide by three and a quarter tall. It was out of a scrap of paper, so it was already that size, but you can cut yours if you need to, or adjust as needed if you're using your scraps. So this one goes here at the top, and you'll notice the space down here at the bottom. I'm going to put a little pocket. So I cut a piece of cardstock for the pocket, that is five and a quarter by one and a half, and then a piece of pattern paper that is five and one eighth by one and three eighths. So we're gonna glue this together. This is gonna to be a um, flat pocket for some tags that will hold our flaps down. So like I said, I was not using any magnets in this project. So let's get this on here. I'm using the B side on this one, the back side. And I've got my flap. So this pocket's going to go right there. So we just want glue. Make sure it is on the bottom. Look at your paper. So you want to line glue on the bottom and the two ends. So go ahead and stick that down. Match it up to the sides and the bottom. And burnish it on. There's a pocket, so that's, the tags are going to go in there. And, okay, so let me see if I can explain what, what has happened here. So this three-quarter inch is the space and then I needed the half inch. So I did have two other pieces of cardstock that I forgot to, to share at the front, but these two pieces are the hinges that are gonna add extra thickness to this area here and then attach. So I totally forgot those. Had them cut and these are, you want two that are five and a quarter by one and one quarter. And then I had scored them at, on the one and one quarter side at a half inch each. So I'm gonna fold and burnish these right now. So like on the, the one inch sides, where I had double thickness of cardstock, that was my intention to have double thickness here as well. So this attaches onto this piece, and then that gives me the half inch for the um, attaching. So this wasn't a mistake, it was just an omission by me. It was a mistake for not putting the attaching these flaps with the uh, before the pattern paper though. So 
I'm going to go ahead and attach them down on top of the pattern paper, see how the waterfall looks, and if it needs to be covered, of course I will. So I'm going to take, put glue on this three quarter inch here and take this extra support piece here, this three quarters of an inch, and glue it right on top of that. And of course it has a half inch score mark um, right there on that edge for attaching. So we've got that one. Let's go ahead and put it on this one as well. So the glue goes on the three quarter inch flap here and then we take this and we line it up and attach it down. I'm still in frame here where you can see right like that. Line them up on the ends right along the fold line and burnish that in really good. Okay, so there's that. So that's going to go at the top. Now we have paper cut to uh, attach onto that. So I have uh, four pieces that I cut at um, four pieces. I know they'll have them here somewhere. Anyway, let me measure it. Four pieces that are five eighths tall by five and an eighth wide. And this is what's going to glue here. Now we need to pay attention. This is the top and this is the bottom one. So when you're looking at your book on the outside on how that's going to look, you don't want it up, you know, ups up something upside down. So I think I'm using the the back side of the paper, so it doesn't really matter as much how it looks. So these this one's got a little bit of lettering on it. So since that's going to be on the outside. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter that much. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. And you're putting one on each side in those three quarter inch sections. So like right there. So it's five eighths into that three quarters. Just burnish that down. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to add one in here. So this just helps, you know, finish it all off and adds a little more strength to those sides of these sections that we're building up this folio. Look at this one here. Okay, there's that one for the top. This one for the bottom. Turn it over here on the inside. And we haven't added our paper in here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do this first, and then I'll add that pattern uh, white cardstock mat. Which I am doing the same as I did the top flap. Oops, way too much glue there. Okay. All right, so I have that piece cut here. This uh, is white cardstock for the center bottom flap. And you cut one that is five and one eighth wide by four and eight, four and one eighth tall. So that glues right there. Burnish. Okay, so there's our flaps done. Now we're going to take the cover and we are going to glue these. Now remember yours, you can have it uh, put it on before you add your pattern paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
flatten it down, put glue on the half inch section only, and attach the fold of that hinge to the bottom. Now it's not going to go all the way across, you want it to kind of centered, so you're going to have about a sixteenth of an inch on each side. Because I didn't want it hanging on the inside where it's folding. So burnish that really well. Open that back up and burnish. And then that will stand up like that. Okay. So then the top one goes up here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it, flatten it down. Glue on that half inch. Turn this so we can see a little better. And we're going to make it, I'll leave it like this. We need to fold this up so we can make it match. So we want the fold of our flap here right on the top edge of this folio back. And we want to line these up side to side. There we go. And burnish. And of course you open it up and burnish on the inside. So for now I'm going to leave these with this black showing right now and then I will decide if I need to add pattern paper to that or not. So let's, let's work on our waterfall. Let's close that back up. You'll see now how it has a box look to it right there. Okay. So let's get the waterfall. So we have our waterfall belly band piece. We do not have to add paper to it. So I'm just burnishing those fold lines to make sure it goes under good because that's where we're going to attach it. So I've got these all in order. I want to make sure I don't lose them. I'm keeping them because you'll see in a minute why, why that's that way. And that's the top pattern. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the first one. And your burnishing is always very important to make sure you've got this really nice and flat and it's going to go here at the top it should fit exactly between this section and right on the fold so it's fold here in the hinge of the flat fold of this piece top piece here so turn it over you have your half inch section you can see that put the glue on the back of it line this up so the fold is right exactly along the fold of the belly band piece. And you want to make sure we're lining up correctly from side to side. So I'm going to burnish that down. Open it up. If there's any extra glue coming out, be sure and wipe that off. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take your next waterfall. Make sure you've got it really nice and burnished there. Again, we're going to put glue on that half inch on the back side where it's folded. And you're going to place the fold of this one right up against the cut edge of the one you just put down. So there's going to be that half inch space. I'm lining it up side to side and burnishing it in. Drop this top one down and see how they look. Okay, so you see you've got that half inch. You can't really see very well with this black on black. But you're going to very carefully glue down each waterfall piece. And like this, it's got to be glue on the half inch on the back. Fold goes right up against the cut edge of the one you just put on. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing the rest of them all the same. Okay, so there's our waterfall right there on our 
belly band piece. So we have the two flaps here on the back. We're going to go ahead and put our pattern paper on. Now, I've got mine all cut. So you're going to cut, use one sheet of the pattern paper. Let me grab one for an example. We'll use this one as an example. This is not the one I used, but I cut where I want the pattern to be, or what, say if you wanted this image to be your top. So you would cut it so that you would cut off some and then measure over. So you want this to be four and a half wide. Let me double check that. Pattern paper. No, four and a half is too wide. What did I cut? I did cut four and a half. So we're going to have to change that to four and three eighths. So let me change on my notes. <clears throat> four and three-eighths wide. Four and three-eighths wide. And your little strips are going to be four and three-eighths wide as well. So you're going to cut four and three-eighths, one big strip. And then you're going to start from the bottom. So if you want this as your top, so this one's mine's going to fit here. And then you see how the next one's going to fit down. It's going to be the same one down. So you're going to cut half inch strips. So you start at your top, cut your four and a half for your big piece by four and three eighths. Let me double check. Four and three eighths by four and three eighths. Yeah. So you cut your first piece, four and three eighths by four and three eighths. Then each next one will be a half inch tall by four and three eighths. So each one's going to be like that. So I'm going to trim mine down for just uh, just a little bit here. Okay, so I recut just an eighth of an inch off the ends of each of mine. So I've laid them out. So this is the top part that I cut, four and three eighths by four and three eighths. So that's going to go on that first section. And I've laid these out so you can kind of see how you keep the pattern going. Okay, so they're each a half inch tall by four and three eighths wide. So you want to lay them out so that you can see them. Because this is where you're going to put the first one on. And then you want to put corresponding ones on each of the bottoms of the each of the other flaps. So we're not covering the entire flaps. If you wanted to cover the entire flaps, you could, but you wouldn't have this continuous cut paper look. Um, and I'll make, it'll make more sense. I'm sure you've probably seen it before on other waterfalls. But so let us put this one down first and get it on and burnished. So the next piece we want is the continuation of this honey pot. So we take this top one here, put the glue on the back. And we're going to raise our flap up, and we're going to put this one here on the bottom of the second flap. Kind of making sure it's about the same. So see how when it comes down together, you can see the image continues. So you're going to keep doing that. So you want the next piece to be another bit of the honey pot. This one goes here. Okay, so you can see how it's just kind of got a cut bit there. So the next one is some of this flowers. You want to make the flowers match up. Okay, just keep doing that. Make sure you're just getting them in the correct order. That's why I like to lay them out so I can see the image. Even though they're cut apart, I can see the image. Because once they're separated, um, sometimes you can get mixed up with your up-down. 
the directions and everything. And then I always double check to make sure before I really burnished it down. So I just kind of tack it down at first. Two more to go. Pretty sure I didn't flip that, I hope. Let's see here. See the image is right. Yeah, that's fine. And then the last one. Now you see I don't quite have a half inch there because of the size of my book. That's okay. This one's still going to go here on the bottom. Or if you wanted to cut a different pattern up on top of it. But I, I think I'm going to leave these blank for photos and not have any paper or even the mats on there. So I've got some ink glue out on this one. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. Let's get it over just a tad. Just not burnished down yet, so I want to move it just, just like a little bit. Let's see how it looks now. Okay. All right, so we burnish it. And then there's our waterfall with the pattern paper on. And you see, it kind of gives the illusion of a continuation of that image. And that's what I wanted. So grab your book again. Um, one other thing on the inside here, if you wanted to, you can cut uh, 3 8 inch strips that go in between. It's not necessary, but you can if you want to finish that look in there. I'm not going to be doing that on camera, and I'm not sure if I will. I might. So here I do have some of this black showing on mine. If you uh, didn't get yours down uh, when you were supposed to because I made the mistake, um, you may want to correct yours also. So I'm going to cut, turn the camera off, and then find the paper, some paper, and cut two strips of paper that I think will look okay to kind of finish this off. So I've cut from scraps of paper two pieces that are five and three eighths by one inch. I went with the one inch because I hope I can burnish it down to make it smooth enough in there so that my photo mats that go under the belly band snag up. So go ahead and put two of these down here. And it's not even from the same paper, but it's so similar that it's that it's it's fine. I'm going to burnish it really, really well right here where the seam is. Okay, so I'm going to show you another little trick where I've got the idea from another Country Craft Creations designer, Bonnie. Uh, she uses clear clear tape on the where pockets go in and out. And so, of course, it's not this situation, but I think it will work. Now, I'm not going to put it all the way across simply because of those ends it would show, I think. But I'm going to take some tape and put it over this seam. So that will smooth that out right there. Because that waterfall is going to go in there. So I want to smooth this out just where the seam is. So. Okay, so you really can't see that, but it makes it smooth and it doesn't hang as bad. So it's a great tip from Bonnie. Uh, she uses it for inside of her pockets, which is a great idea. So. This is going to go right in here. So see, that doesn't look so bad now. Still can kind of see the seams, but that's that's the way it, it's going to be. Um, I wonder if I go ahead and put some tape on all the way across on those ends. Just, it might make it just enough to blend in a little bit. So I'm going to do that. No, you can't really see it in the camera, but it kind of smooths that out just a tiny bit where those seams are. Okay. Now, let's put the top, let's put glue on our top hinge piece. 
and we're going to make sure we're lining it up. You're going to have about half inch on each side, I think. Yeah, just under that. So we could say that it's like about a little over three eighths. But I'm just eyeballing it and I'm putting the hinge or the fold, I mean, of the top of the waterfall right up to the top of this inside piece. Make sure your <clears throat> flap can still go over it. And I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to burnish this. Make sure there's no glue on there. Okay. Now this is where, if it's a pocket, Bonnie puts tape on this here. Of course, I won't be able to do the bottom one because it'll be attached down, but we can make it where this one doesn't snag. So you just put some clear tape over that and burnish it. So that keeps it nice and smooth. Now this is going to come all the way down and attach down here at the bottom. And there is a little bit of a space, but that's okay. You've got pattern paper under there and it doesn't really show. So it could make it a little bit longer, but I want to make sure these hinges clear. So we're going to burnish this. And I'm going to reach in there, and if there's any glue on the ends, catch that. There's that. So there's our waterfall in place. Of course, the flaps come up, and we'll have a tag in there to hold that. Really pretty. Now we have our two mats that I've already cut the pattern papers for. So we have two cardstock mats. This corner needs rounded a little better. I used a half inch corner rounder on them and the pattern paper as well. So these mats are cut on them waterfall inserts. They're cut five and a quarter wide by seven inches tall and then the pattern papers are five and eighth wide by six and seven eighths tall. You could put pattern paper front and back. I'm just going to do one side for now. And put the glue on. I'm leaving the back side just for plain cardstock. If you wanted to use some of your white cardstock and make some photo mats, uh, probably a good idea maybe to wait until you see what size your photos are. Just going to mat this on here. So burnish it on. And then the other one, let's see here. So if you haven't checked out the Bee House paper on countrycraftcreations.com yet, if you think it's something you might want, just check it out. It's exclusive, so it's, it's uh, always going to be available, it's my understanding, but you will probably get up one or two packs of it to have on hand because it makes a really pretty folio or album. There's several different designs by the designers. So you pull this back. So they just slide right under here. Nice and neat little tuck spot for those. So the next thing we need to do is make, and I'm just checking this to see I like how it goes. Got our photo mats in there. That's really pretty. I really would hate to cover that paper up, but of course you can. If you, it depends on how many photos you have. So I'm just looping this back around. Okay. So I kind of like it like that. There we go. So we have that. So we do need the last thing we need to do is make tags for this and then we'll put ribbon on here and then I will decide how much decorating I'm going to do and do that off camera but for now let's go ahead and make us a tag so let me um, 
grab some of my scraps and I'll get something made, some measurements for you on that. Okay, so I've made some tags, and a, a tag and a booklet for inside this pocket. So let me go over it with you real quick. For the booklet, I took a scrap of the pattern paper and it measures, um, mine measures eight and a quarter wide by four tall. I scored it in half at four and an eighth. Fold it in half, rounded my corners. I inked it so that you could kind of see the darker edges. I tied a jute button string in the green color here on the, around the booklet like this. I added two black photo mats inside that are three and a half by three and a half, rounded the corners on those as well. So that just goes there inside and I tied a bee charm here on the end of my string and added a flat back a uh, gemstone or some gemstone, whatever those flat shiny. Anyway, that goes there in that pocket right there that helps hold this flaps down. And then the tag is black cardstock three and a quarter wide by four and three quarters tall. Corner punch the bottom, angle punch the top. I did punch the hole after I added the pattern paper, which is a three and five eighths wide by four and five eighths tall. I added an eyelet white like on the other side. And then a bit of the uh, some yellow, I think it's called, um, the color I use is, okay, it doesn't say the color. It's a dark yellow, and I did spritz it a little bit, kind of crinkled it up. So that kind of goes in right there. So that is the tags inside. Here on the pocket, I fussy cut out this little piece here with the B and this, I call it string, it goes across. I glued that on and then I fussy cut a larger bee out and glued that on right there. So I like how that looks. So the next thing we're going to do is close it up and we're going to add a ribbon tie closure. For the ribbon closure here that I have on the back, I put two pieces of score tape and then used about yard and a half or so of the ribbon seam rounding and ribbon in the two colors i use black and the yellow gold uh, from country craft creations i put them down with score tape then i took a scrap that i had left of cardstock that's about um oops four and a half by three and three quarters and then i cut out a piece of paper that was i had a scrap of that is four and three-eighths by three and five-eighths, thereabouts. And I rounded the corners and then glued that over on top to keep this ribbon in place on the back. So then, of course, I tied it. I also spritzed it some with water and kind of wrinkled it up. And then I tied the two ends together and cut this down short to knots so that it um, can fray on its own like that. So this is the tutorial for the bee house folio that i created for country craft creations be sure to check out country craft creations for your crafting supplies for this exclusive paper collection called bee house it's beautiful it comes in the eight and a half by eleven size also for the exclusive artisan cardstock which is a really wonderful cardstock you also want to look for your adhesive such as your score tape and art glitter glue seam binding ribbon and other elements that you might want to use in your project. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching and please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and then click on the bell so that you'll receive a notification of my next upload and also click on like because when you do that uh, helps increase my uh, exposure to others who might be searching for projects like this. So again thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.